When Rembrandt was 25 years old, he painted the anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicolas Tull, which is on display in the Mowitz House in The Hague. Dr. Tull is the central figure with the hat, and he is giving an anatomy lesson to the Guild of Surgeons in Amsterdam. Rembrandt had just moved there and was quickly making a name for himself. The body being analyzed is from a 28-year-old criminal called Aris Kind. Just like Rembrandt, Aris was born in Leiden. But whereas Rembrandt was working on a noble career, Aris Kind had become a thief. He had already been caught many times before. Most recently, he was accused of a violent robbery after he had mugged a gentleman to steal his cloak. And this time, Aris would not get away with his crime. He was convicted to death and had to involuntarily pay back his debt to society by serving as a subject for an anatomy lesson. It is January 31st, 1632, and it is time for the yearly anatomy lesson of the Amsterdam Guild of Surgeons. They picked the date in the middle of the winter to make sure that it was cold enough to limit the deterioration and smell of the dead body that was investigated. And while this was the beginning of the Dutch Golden Century, artificial refrigeration had not been invented yet. So the guild made sure that the event took place about an hour after the public execution of a criminal, because by law they could only use a body of an executed criminal for this event. So it is about one hour after the execution, and the black lips are evidence that the criminal is not alive anymore. Rembrandt painted the body as partly shaded, a technique called umbra mortis, meaning shadow of death. It is just an additional way to make sure that the viewers of the painting understood that this is a dead body. And Rembrandt was a witness at the scene. The Guild of Surgeons had especially invited him to create a group portrait of this event. But he was not the only one in attendance, as surgeons and medical students were required to attend to learn more about the human body. And the event was also open to the public. While they had to pay a small entrance fee to attend, it was popular enough that the Guild had rented a theatre to perform the lecture. Now that we understand some of the background, we can focus on the lecturer, the 38-year-old Dr. Nicolas Tulp. This was not how his parents had called him. Back in that day, people could change their name relatively easily, and this surgeon had no problem with that. He was born as Klaas Peterson. After his studies, he changed his name to Nicolaus Petraeus, which was a more credible name for a physician and surgeon. But after he had established a successful practice in Amsterdam, he changed his name again, this time to Nicolaus Tulp, inspired by the beautiful tulips that he saw near his house. And whether his name changes helped him or not, he had become a very successful surgeon who had also published a popular book on anatomy. Later in his life, he would even become the mayor of Amsterdam. But here, Dr. Tulp is teaching about the human body to a group of surgeons. Dr. Tulp has a forceps instrument in his right hand and shows how the muscles in the arm are attached. With his left hand, he illustrates to the audience the movement that the left arm and hand are capable of. Based on what we know today about the human body, Rembrandt's depiction of the arm contained some minor mistakes, but overall it was surprisingly accurate. On a side note, Rembrandt did not just execute what the guild instructed him, he did use his own artistic judgment. In a typical dissection, the doctor would start by opening the chest and the thorax on the front of the body as those organs were the first parts to deteriorate. In the meanwhile, the surgeons all seemed to look at a distinct place, a choice of Rembrandt to not make this a boring group portrait, but to add some dynamics and trigger the attention of the viewer. At least some of the surgeons seemed to look at the large open book on the right. The book is probably The Fabric of the Human Body by Andreas Vesalius and contains medical information that supplements what the surgeons hear and see in this anatomy lesson. And before we reach the end here, please have a look at the white starch colors of the surgeons. Rembrandt painted them in great detail. These white colors were fashionable, 
in 17th century the Netherlands, but it was quite difficult to keep these colors this white and to iron them to appear in this perfect form. But if you could get them right, it would show your distinctiveness and Rembrandt masterfully captured this aspect here. Thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, you can hit the like button and if you have any suggestions on other paintings that you would like me to discuss, just leave a comment below.